Hey guys, welcome back to Task Force Off-Road. My name is George, and we have, guess what, another jet ski video for you guys. So I actually have to go get the part, and you, you guys already know what it is. You can see the title, but I'm still gonna make it seem like you don't know what it is. So give me like two seconds, I'm gonna get the part, and we're gonna start unboxing this thing. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so we have the BRP SeaDoo Factory Depth Finder. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna tie right into our factory uh, computer and our little LCD screen up there so we can see the depths that we're working with. Now, I know there's a function that you can also find temperature, or water temperature, rather. I don't know if this is gonna give us the water temperature feature, but we're gonna find out one way or another if it does. So this is, again, the Sea-Doo BRP Genuine Part Depth Finder that you can install on your jet ski, and we're gonna give it a go and see how this thing goes, because like all BRP instructions, they're kind of weird. So this is gonna be a fun one. Without further ado, let's get that cover off. Okay, now just like everything else we've done on this ski so far, our first step is gonna be to remove the front the back, front, and back seats. Now our next step is going to actually be removing this deck tray to get access to the rest of our engine bay. So I'm gonna figure out which Torx bolt this is and then we're gonna get it done. Okay, now I'm gonna unscrew these. I found a bit for my impact gun. I'm gonna unscrew these with the impact, however, I strongly suggest when putting these back in, don't use the impact because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure these go straight into fiberglass and you only have so many shots at using an impact gun with that before you break it. So it's just better safe than sorry. Actually, these might not go into fiberglass. We're gonna find out in a second. I might've just talked out my ass a little bit. Ooh, these are different sizes. Or are they? No, they're not. Like that is weird. Why is that? Okay, these two front ones actually have a nut on the back side of them, so that's good to know. I'm not 100% positive on size, but it seems like a 10 millimeter is gonna fit. So. Okay, so it's a nut and a washer. And, pretty solidly confirmed it's a 10 mil. So definitely make sure you don't drop these inside of the engine compartment because that's going to be a bad day. Okay, now find a safe place to put all this hardware. I'm just going to put it in the gun well because it won't get lost there. So there's three more bolts under your ski pole link attachment. There we go. And now you can remove the deck. Woo! And I'm gonna be real honest, I'm gonna clean this. That's, that's gross. That doesn't look good either. I'm gonna go clean this real fast. Okay guys, so first things first is it appears that I had an exhaust leak all of last summer. So, odds are I'm gonna have a nice little conversation with my dealership who winterized this thing because I'm not too happy about that. Anywho, besides the point though, so to get you some essay here, front part of the ski, the engine, we have our exhaust is that giant thing right there. So that clean spot in the fiberglass that was black, that is exactly where the depth finder is going to go. So you guys know what's going on there. Okay, now that you know where the depth finder is going to go, 
I can show you how it's gonna get set up. So here's our mounting plate for the depth finder that's gonna go onto the ski itself. Now what we're actually gonna do, this doesn't get drilled into place, we're gonna use a marine grade silicone to pretty much glue this to the fiberglass. So we have to make sure we have a clean surface to do that, which is why I used some gunk engine degreaser to get up all of that soot from the exhaust leak that apparently I had. And then I used rubbing alcohol. I'm about to use another episode of rubbing alcohol to dry that area and make sure there's nothing else there. And then I'm gonna use the alcohol on this surface as well before I put the marine grade caulking sealer on top of it. Now this is for permanent use, so it's kind of a stick it and forget it kind of thing. Make sure it's where you want it to go. So that's, you can't, can't stress that enough. Make sure you put this in the place where you want it to be. So do some test fits first and make sure it's the way you want to do it. So I'm gonna clean this one more time. I'm gonna clean that one more time. I'm gonna test fit it again and then we're gonna start gluing this thing in. Now, I'm gonna confirm placement. So this goes together like that. I'm gonna want it like this. So cord facing the, I think right side is starboard side. So port facing the starboard side, the cord, uh, or right side of the ski for those of you who don't know the nautical terms. I also might be wrong there. So like just the right side of the ski. So I'm gonna test fit this really fast. Perfect. Okay, so now that I know which, how, my, how I want it, I'm gonna glue it into place after cleaning this one more time. All right, now I'm gonna go get my marine grade caulk. Hey, <laughs> he said caulk. So I got my 3M marine adhesive sealant, 5200. And the directions say put a generous amount on this. So in other words, we just don't want this to ever come off. We have our small side going to the top here. And we are just going to place this on the hull. All right, so that's where that is. Now we're gonna let this dry. Okay guys, so we'll wait for that to dry. We have this piggyback wiring harness that we can start running to, you know, make efficient use of our time here. So we're gonna come over here into, I'll be honest, I'm not sure exactly what this is but it looks like a power steering reservoir or maybe coolant it, it could be coolant so we have what's probably a coolant reservoir here so we can come over here and unplug it Ooh, that's a little wet i'm just gonna dry that off real fast and now so what this is gonna do is we're gonna take female to male and then female to oh that was hold on so yeah, our placeholder that was here goes right into this guy. And then we take our new diagnostic tool and put it there. And we have our fuse and we start running the wire along there. So I'm gonna zip tie this stuff real fast. Okay guys, so it's another day. I had to give it like, I don't know, three days to let this dry, mostly because we had really crappy weather and it was downpouring the last couple days. So I got the caulk to dry. It is not going anywhere. And I took all of the wiring, I ran it behind the engine here. You can see where all these zip ties are. And now I have all this excess down here to do with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the gel pad on the depth finder, put the depth finder onto the hull, Hopefully we don't have any air bubbles, then we can go and we can test it after we get it all plugged up. And once it's tested and it's working, we can then go and just, you know, button everything up, make it look pretty, so. All right guys, so to start off, it's really important that we prep the surface of both our depth finder and the hull with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we can clean it up and ensure we get good adhesion with the gel pad and we just make sure that we don't get any air bubbles, so. Clean that up real good, let it dry. And then do the same for the hole. So I'm gonna do that off camera. All right, so it looks like we have two sides to this, an actual gel side, more like a foamy side. So I'm gonna put this foamy side, once I take like the little adhesive backing layer off, that's gonna go onto the depth finder. And then once that's on the depth finder, I will remove the other side and put that on 
the hole. And actually, it's just what they use to protect it, because this is also a jelly side. But this one's gonna be easier to remove. So, just go and stick it on. And try not to get any air bubbles, and then if you see any air bubbles, try and press them out. Because the bright side, since it is a gel pad, you can re-stick it and stick it a, f a few times as long as the area is clean. Okay, so that looks good. So now, I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see me put this on. And then just slide it directly into New home. Okay, now that she's in, if you take the wiring, plug it in with this connector. Alright, now that that's all plugged up, it should work. Okay, guys, change of scenery while we're working on the jet ski. So, uh, I thought I had an issue, I didn't. Well, maybe I did, but letting everything chill and cycle a couple times probably fixed it. But at first I wasn't getting a read, now I am, and I did nothing but plug it in, unplug it a couple times, and that didn't seem to work and waited about a week. So, to get the depth finder to work, put the key in, or to cycle to it. The directions tell you to go to the mode, it's not mode, so we're gonna cycle the key, we're gonna give it power. Now we're gonna come over here to the right side and we're gonna hit the right arrow. And that's gonna change it and boom, depth right there. So it's reading, obviously that's not accurate because it's reading outside on dry, like that's, it's fine because it reads seven feet, even though it's not seven feet, obviously. However, point being guys, we're good. So it's all working. So now all I have to do is clean up all the zip ties over here, snip these guys, uh, clean up all this extra wiring, and once all that extra wiring is cleaned up, we're gonna be good to go for the freaking water. So I'm gonna clean all this stuff up really fast. I'm gonna clean up the wiring, and then you'll see me super speed up, putting the deck pieces back on. And once the deck pieces are back on, this install is complete. Okay guys, sorry about that. The camera battery died. Um, that's it for the install. I know you guys saw everything besides probably just tightening some of these bolts and putting the seat back on, but that's it. There isn't much to it. It was honestly a really, really simple install. And I think maybe the computer just needed to learn the depth finder was there and that is the issue I was having. But it solved itself. The instructions do have troubleshooting options and I did attempt to do those. So I want to uh, give that give you guys that information as well with that being said guys though that is all for today's video please like share comment and subscribe i really appreciate it when you guys like the videos and leave the comments the algorithm appreciates it too um that's it guys more jet ski videos to come the summer is just starting and i cannot wait to take this thing out in the water and i cannot wait to get the other one running so without further ado i'll see you guys in the next one It's that first day of first grade, that cute girl, your third day, that backpack, that snapback you've had since the third grade. The first time you got laid, the worst time you got played, it hurt but you're okay, you learn from your mistakes. Your friends back in high school, we thought we were so cool, we'd steal Jack, my dad's stash, and drink the whole night through. The 